I mean, humans have genetic information that is translated into proteins, which are actually the working horses inside the cell. And they are important for the cell functionality, and they are different based on which cell type it is, right? But there's another layer of regulation on top of proteins, which is protein modifications. And one such modification is ubiquitination. And in the lab, we are interested in ubiquitination and enzymes. These are again proteins which carry out ubiquitination on other proteins. And approximately 3% of human genome encodes for these ubiquitin ligating enzymes. And we are interested in a specific set of them, so-called melanoma antigens. In cancers, you have both tumor-promoting molecules, so-called oncogenes, but then you also have tumor suppressors, um, which, when overexpressed, actually act against tumors. And these melanoma antigen proteins, by ubiquitinating tumor suppressors, they send them for destruction. So they essentially promote cancers by down-regulating tumor suppressors. But what we don't understand at the moment is which melanoma antigen is targeting which tumor suppressor or which so-called substrate. With the Impulse Science project, we are going to target highly oncogenic melanoma-associated antigens and map those melanoma antigens with the corresponding substrates. And by mapping the relation between these two entities, we hope to understand when they meet in the cell, how they meet in the cell, can this meeting be avoided? Meaning by putting drugs, uh, specific drugs that in interrupt these protein-protein um, interactions. Yeah. The most challenging part of this entire endeavor is that ubiquitin ligases and their substrates, so melanoma antigens and their substrate meet very briefly only during the reaction and then they separate. So how are you ever going to find which ubiquitin ligates targets which substrates? And we recently developed a method in which just when they meet during the reaction, we are able to specifically put a label on the substrate. So on this particular window, we see around four or five different cells. And in the color red is we are visualizing the modification ubiquitination, um, which happens to be on the mitochondria of these cells. And then we are checking mitochondrial labeling in the other um, window, which is orange colored. And we are checking if these are matching with each other. And this shows that they are indeed matching and that the method is able to uh, visualize ubiquitination on a specific organ. And damaged mitochondria are normally labeled with this modification, um, which happens with aging and in diseases such as Parkinson's as well. So we hope this tool will be useful in that research as well. No, because I, I think another trick is to really push it to the bottom of the tube. Okay. Um, and then actually try not to release it, just keep pressing it to the bottom. There's oh, okay. nothing in there. Yeah, because I always leave a little bit of space otherwise, and I think that maybe takes up the beads as well. Yeah, I mean, many of my lamb members during the course of their project uh, have to do new and new things, and I'm always up for um, uh, putting on my lab coat and uh, doing the experiment with them, which I enjoy. And I also heard feedback from my team that it's also very uh, good for them. Yeah. Impulse Science really does provide you with a significant sum of money. And it's a money that we will, of course, judiciously use to recruit people. And, and this is also for a span of five years, which is the amount of time sometimes you need to do ambitious projects. And it's also encouraging for me to take up these big challenges. You know, sometimes you need both um, encouragement monetarily as well as uh, scientifically. And this is, this is both. Uh, and this is a fantastic thing um, to dream big, um, which is what I'm doing. <laughs>